Did you ever wonder how AI actually moves all of that information, the millions of calculations per second that power everything from GPT to self-driving cars? As it turns out, the answer isn't just the chips. It's in the light that connects them. I'm Katy Perry, and today we are chatting with a company that's transforming how data travels inside AI systems and hyperscale data centers. Welcome, Raju Kankipati, Chief Revenue Officer of Poet Technologies, ticker Poet. Hello, Raju. Katie, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited it, uh, to be with you today. It's great to have you here today because even reading up on the company, I'm just fascinated uh, by everything you're building and it lines up so well with all of the topics that our viewers and our community at StockTwits are so interested in. So let's start with the basics for listeners who might not be engineers deep into AI as much. How would you describe what Poet Technologies does and the problems that your business solves? Sure. So fundamentally, we are pushing past the boundaries of current limits on data transfer speeds, right? And doing it with advancements that meet the incredible demand for more bandwidth and greater efficiency. So we are developing 400 gigabits per lane technology that doubles the bandwidth capacity over what's currently in the market. So right now, for example, 200 gigabits per lane architecture is considered highly advanced. So we announced a collaboration with Quantum Computing Inc., QCI. So together we are accelerating way past that and improving efficiency. So our solution will shorten processing times for complex tasks, which is of course critical for the growth in quantum computing and AI. The second thing is we're using a technology called Thin Film Lithium Niobate or TFLM which is a material that most people likely haven't heard of, but it is important because how efficient it is at converting electrical signals into optical signals. So this allows for high-speed modulators that can be integrated with the existing semiconductor manufacturing processes. So TFNL is suited for scalability, which is critical because the demand for AI systems is only going to get more and more intense. So the third uh, top point I want to highlight is with QCI's TFLN modulators integrated on the POET optical interposer platform technology. So we're able to provide an optical engine that delivers industry's leading data transfer speeds at 3.2 terabits per second and beyond. Just to put that into perspective, right? A 1.6 T terabits uh, per second level is where the most advanced products on the market are operating today. And that segment is very, very new. So to be able to provide a solution that doubles the current data transfer speeds allows us to be ahead of the market, which is uh, which will attract more interest from AI system networks and data center hyperscalers. Fantastic, uh, very detailed overview. I have lots of lots of follow up questions. I guess in in simple terms, when you talk about poet moving data using light instead of electricity. Is, is the benefit of that, the speed, the scale? What, it, what is the simplest way for someone to understand uh, why that works so well? Yes. So basically, I mean, today, most of the connections, for example, this AI systems, right, the GPUs, the chips, they all connect to each other, talk to each other using electricity. Uh, the ones and zeros are transferred using electrical copper wires. The several limitations and copper may not be the best material because it interacts with the environment, right? It, mm -hmm. it has losses, it has electromagnetic uh, interference. There's a lot of issues and light is an amazing form of transferring that data. So with POET, we are actually transforming that uh, way of communication. It has been existing for a while, but we are pushing the limits of speed on how fast the light communication can happen between these chips. So that's where POET comes into play because our platform can carry both electricity as well as light on the same platform. So we take the data through electric using the computers or computing or GPUs, convert it into light and send it across to the other chip in a much, much faster way. Okay, and I, I think you, you briefly touched on this, but I wanna go back quickly to the quantum computing collaboration that you reference. Quantum is such a hot button topic among our community and retail investors overall, a, a lot of high interest stocks in that area and a lot of debates over sort of where where it is in, in a commercialization standpoint. And it's something that just sounds futuristic, even by AI standards. So what what's the most important thing that uh, our viewers should should take home about this announcement? What does it 
mean at the end of the day for Poet to be collaborating with a quantum computing player? Good question. So the Poet optical interposer technology along with this thin film lithium niobate is not a quantum computer by itself. It's an enabling platform that makes quantum photonic computing and communication faster, smaller, and more scalable by providing the best electro-optic and nonlinear performance for manipulating photons on the chip. The POET platform, along with TFLN modulators, can efficiently manipulate photons with low losses and run at much faster speeds. So that's than what's available in the market today. Got so it. So that, that's how we differentiate and that's how we play a role in the quantum computing. Okay, fascinating. And I want to shift quickly to, to commercial traction. Uh, you recently announced a $5 million production order for, for your optical engines. Seems like a, a major milestone. What does it represent in terms of the commercial validation and scalability of your business? So this is, this is what we've been working towards for the last three, four years. So we've been telling our investors, our customers that we have gone past the engineering phase and now we are entering into that manufacturing phase, which is so true because we have spent time developing. Now it's time to commercialize and start shipping product. And we are so happy that we have customer traction and we're getting these small purchase orders coming along. So we are exercising our production line and come 2026, second half and 2027, we are really preparing ourselves to ramp to high volume and really show the potential of what our technology can do. And when uh, when we talk about these customers, can you give us a sense of who, who the buyers are, either types of companies or role within the company? Who's sort of the, the perfect audience that, that you would be selling to? Sure. So, so we have like three types of customer buckets, if, uh, if I may answer that way. Yep. So one is the traditional hyperscale data centers or AI network customers that build this electrical to optical converters, right? So they use our engines to make it easy, cheaper, and faster, right? So that's one uh, customer list. The other customers are this chip-to-chip -chip communication. You see all the GPUs, the memory. You need optical connections between these two, and you need high-power laser source. So they're using the POET engine to supply light into those chips. So mm -hmm. that's one customer base. And then the third customers are really at the edge of a network when they hand off data from a data center to a telecom like AT&T, Verizon. So that's where they use our technology because our technology can be very compact. And that's a differentiator. They want to save space. They want to pack more data into that fiber. So that's the third set of customers that we are targeting. Got it. And the the economic model of the business, are they multi-year licensing deals, subscriptions? How should people think about sort of how the money comes in and moves moves into the business? So today we are not in the licensing uh, market. We are more into product sales. And uh, one good thing is uh, we have some stickiness to our products, right? Once a customer designs their product with our engines inside, it's usually, there's two ways, right? One way is, one thing is, customers will like it because it's so easy to use, so easy to manufacture and all that. So that's one form of stickiness. The other form of stickiness is it's difficult for customer to take that away and then use a traditional solution. Why would they do it when the solution works so well and it's so easy to implement? Mm, got it. Okay. I want to talk also about, it was on your website, this $150 million oversubscribed offering. Uh, so for retail investors listening, tell us a little bit about that and how you plan to use that capital. Uh, the biggest priorities that you're going to put that against, how are you leveraging that as a business? Sure. As I said, I mean, we are at that phase where we are done with technology development. I mean, we're not done, done, but we are moving from technology company to a manufacturing company where we want to ramp product so 2026, yes, we're forecasting a ramp, but I think 27 and 28 is where really the market is going to take off for this high-speed optical communication. And we are preparing ourselves, right? And these all require investment like CapEx investment, investment in people. We cannot, of course, go to millions and millions of revenue with the existing uh, employee base, right? So we have to grow the company. We have to add more CapEx. We have to acquire talent. So I think the capital will really help us to plan for that future ramp. And that's exactly what we're thinking of. Okay. And then one way to think about the company based on uh, my research was to, to think about it as poet, as something that is powering AI. Um, 
we've kind of touched on this in detailed terms, but in kind of everyday language, how does the technology make AI faster, more efficient, just to sort of bring this bring this home for our viewers? Sure. So, so Poet, with the optical interposer platform, right, what we're trying to do is bring several things together onto a small package that can be manufactured at a wafer level. What a wafer level manufacturing means is today, if you go to an optical manufacturing line, you will see a lot of manual one at a time assembly process steps. So we are trying to convert that into an eight inch wafer where we can assemble 400, 500 chips in one go. And when I say we, it's a machine. The machine assembles the entire wafer, get 400 chips out at a time. And that is what we mean by scaling our technology. So when AI needs this massive, massive amounts of data transfer, so our technology will enable that because it's much cheaper and much through, higher throughput to manufacture the, uh, the demanded uh, uh, the transceivers that they need. All right. Final question for you, Raju. A lot of conversations this week and recently AI, are we in a bubble? Is it not in a bubble? You're someone been building in this in the ground floor. What, what do you say to someone who says, you know, we're in a bubble here? Uh, what, what would your response to that be? I mean, I want to believe it's not a bubble because it's, we have seen this movie before, right? For example, if you go back to what computers did to the whole world, right? Uh, back like 30 years or so, when computers were getting into every field, Right. There was fear of losing jobs. There was fear of bubble and all that. And now the same thing is happening with AI. So AI is not just specific to a field. Right. It will be everywhere in our life. And that's how the world is transforming. And AI is for good. Right. It, it has a lot of benefits to the humankind. So I think this will take off because AI will get into every field and it will help humans to live better. And uh, so overall, it's a good thing for us. So I don't think it's a bubble. I think it's real and it will help us. Appreciate the insider insight from you, Raju, and really fascinating stuff. I mean, a lot of us wonder what actually makes these AI systems run when you peel back the layers. So it's great to hear about Poet and what you're building in that space. Uh, again, Raju Pankipati, Chief Revenue Officer of Poet Technologies. That's ticker Poet. Thank you so much. You'll have to come back soon. Thank you, Katie. We'll do.